Whisper, tell truth, hold truth, truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Go ahead, have a seat. All right, Officer Jackson, how are you? I'm good. Go ahead and state your full name and spell it for our court reporter. My name is Adam Tyler Jackson, A-D-A-M-T-Y-L-E-R-J-A-C-K-S-O-N. All right, and how are you currently employed? I am employed by the Glen County Police Department in Brunswick, Georgia. All right, and what are your current job duties and responsibilities with the Glen County Police Department? I'm a patrol officer, so my job duties include uh, responding to service calls when people call, ask for a police officer, patrol, drive a marked patrol car. And how long have you been with the Glen County Police Department? I started in uh, March 19th, 2019. Now, have you spent your entire career in law enforcement with Glen County? Yes, I have. All right. And so, you've attended classes and training at the Georgia Peace Officers Standards and Training Council? Yes, I have. All right, so you're post certified? Yes, ma'am. All right. And do you have to go through a police academy or did you go through post? A uh, police academy. And have you always been in the patrol division with Glen County? Yes. And what baker are you in? Um, currently? Currently. Currently. Um, baker 9. All right. Back in February of 2020, what baker were you at? I believe it was in Baker 11, on the north end of the county. Now, today you are dressed in a suit. When you are on patrol, how are you usually dressed? In a uh, standard uh, police officer uniform, with, uh, at the time, there was green slacks and a tan uniform shirt, badge on the shirt, name tag. And normally, when you're driving patrol, is your, are you driving a marked police car? Yes, big white police car with big police letters on the side, lights on the top. All right, and you also wear a body cam as part of that? Yes, I do. So are you familiar with the Satilla Shores neighborhood here in Glen County? I am now. You are now? Yes, ma'am. All right. And what county is Satilla Shores in? In Glen County. Now, had you ever been called personally to any burglaries or entering autos within the Satilla Shores neighborhood in 2019 into January, February of 2020? No. So prior to February of 2020, uh, did you know Mr. William Roddy Bryan? No, ma'am. And prior to February of 2020, did you know Travis McMichael? No, ma'am. Prior to 2020, did you know Greg McMichael? No. All right, so I'm going to draw your attention specifically to the afternoon, <clears throat> Sunday afternoon of February 23rd, 2020, around 1 in the afternoon. Where were you? I was, uh, again, patrolling the uh, north end of the county towards Jessup, and uh, Officer Minshew was responding to a suspicious call and at some point on the radio he said shots fired so obviously myself and several other officers all start heading that direction I'm gonna assist him make sure he's okay figure out what's going on so I started heading that direction uh, got to the Satilla Shores neighborhood uh, at the time I was a fairly new officer so I took on a, a role assisting other officers more experienced officers with handling things at the scene um, my supervisor arrived shortly after that and he asked me to go speak to any uh, residents, see if anybody witnessed anything or anything like that. Um, that was generally what I was doing. All right, so how long did you think it took you to get to Satilla Shores from where you were at the north end? <sighs> Probably 12 minutes, 15 maybe. All right, so when you got there, were the fire trucks and EMS already there? I don't recall um, if they were there or not. All right. So in preparation for your testimony today, did I meet with you previously? Yes. All right. And did I have you look at your body cam video? Um, I think at the time we hadn't looked at it. Okay. But have you looked at it since then? Uh, no. No. You have not seen your body cam video? No. Okay. Did I ask you to look at your body cam video and review it? Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure if we discussed that or not. All right, so when you arrived at the scene, who was already there? 
Um, Officer Minshew was already there, mm -hmm. and I believe that Officer Brandon Berry, they he either arrived the same time I did or mm -hmm. just within a minute or two of me arriving there. All right. And when you got there, you were in a patrol car. Yes. And what did you see as far as the scene itself? Um, I saw um, it was a body in the street mm -hmm. and I saw a truck over to the side of the road and I saw uh, Officer Minshew over where the truck was. So what was the task that you were then assigned to do when you arrived on the scene um, at the corner of Holmes and Satilla Drive on February 23rd, 2020? Uh, my supervisor, Sergeant Leska, he asked me to talk to people that lived in the area, see if there were any witnesses, um, see if anybody had cameras that maybe faced the street, anything like that. Um, I talked to one gentleman named Diego Perez mm -hmm. and asked him if he had any cameras on the exterior of his home. He said he did and that he would see if he had any kind of camera footage. Uh, he returned to me a short time later with a uh, thumb drive memory card, which he said had video footage on it. All right, so let's go ahead and break that down. You're out at the scene and you're tasked with interviewing witnesses. Was mm -hmm. this a witness you picked out or someone who you got directed to? Um, he approached the area. I talked to several residents, but he was the only one that's, that had anything as mm -hmm. far as having the video footage or anything like that. So mm -hmm. he was the only one by name that I talked to and got his contact information and all of that. And when you located him, who was he standing talking to? Uh, I'm not aware of him talking to anybody else. Okay. And he offered to provide you with a USB sort of jump drive? Yes, he had a jump drive that he said had camera footage on it. All right. And at any point in time, did he ask you permission to go over and talk to Travis McMichael? I don't recall if he did or not. Um, if, if he did, I'm sure I would have said to stay where he was at, it's just, you know, treating it as a as a scene. So. All right. And was with regard to the USB drive, did you actually collect that later from Mr. Diego Perez? Yes, I did. All right. Now, you didn't review the footage on that jump drive. No. I, in a situation like that, I knew that we were going to have investigators respond, so I went ahead and just held on to that until I could give it to them. All right. And once you obtained that USB jump drive, handed over to the investigators, um, what then did you do at the scene? Um, at the scene, I helped, uh, we put up crime scene tape, got a uh, crime scene log, which is just a sheet of paper where we write down everybody that's been on the other side of the crime scene tape. Got some other officers needed water, bug spray, things like that. All right, and did you write a brief report in conjunction with the homicide of Ahmaud Arbery. Yes, I did. And your body cam video, did you upload that to the system at the Glen County Police Department? Yes. Okay, so I wanna make sure. You haven't looked at your body cam video? I have not reviewed it. No. All right. Will you be able to review it overnight? If uh, I ask you to? Yes, I can. Okay, all right. One moment, John. Yes. Okay. Judge, I guess I apologize. I'm going to ask the jury to step out so we can authenticate this uh, body cam footage.
So Mr. Goff has stipulated to its authenticity, and we have a stipulation. Agreed. Well, Greg McMichael, we stipulate. All right. At this time, the state will tender into evidence state's exhibit 329. All right, so I'm going to direct your attention to the screen right there. We're going to go ahead and look at about the first 55 seconds. All right. Yes, ma'am. Recognize me. it? Yep. So I'm going to also go ahead and show you I'm going to show you what's been marked as 317. Take a look at 317 and see if you're able to go ahead and recognize that. Okay. And is that a fair and accurate depiction of what is right there? Yes. All right, this time the state will tender the evidence states 317. And go ahead and tell the jury. Oh. No objection. No objection. No objection. Thank you. Go ahead and tell the jury what we're looking at there. We're looking at a screenshot from my body camera footage of Mr. Perez standing near the scene. All right. So just simply a screenshot of what we're seeing. Yes. And then when we look at State Exhibit 318. Right. Take a look at 318. Are you able to recognize that as a, another screenshot from your body cam? Yes, that looks like when about where the video started when I first walked up. All right. At this time, the state would tender to evidence. State's 318. No objection. No objection. No objection. That's good. All right. So with regard to 318, you had kind of parked your patrol car down a ways, right? And yes. had to walk up. Yes. And besides interviewing Diego Perez, you didn't, you did not interview anyone else at the scene, right? No. Okay. How long did you stay, stay at the scene after you turned off your body cam? Not very long um, since it was a busy day. Um, once my supervisor got there and we started getting other calls, he asked me to leave to go take care of some of the other, other uh, business in the county. Okay. So that's after you had obtained the jump drive from Mr. Perez? Yes. All right. All right, so I got one last question for you. With regard to the body cam video, um, the dates and times, do you are you able to explain to the jury the dates and times and how the timestamp works on body cam video? Um, in other words, this has 1825 on it, even though it has the date of February 23rd, 2020. Okay. okay. Yes. Now, 
Obviously, 1825 is not when this is taking place. Objection. She's testifying now. Um, Hold on. I, Hold on. Leading question. Let's just rephrase. All right. What time was it that you were there? I don't set that clock that's on the camera, so I'm not sure why it's showing that date and time. That's okay, that's fine. I just I yeah. didn't know if you were able to explain to the jury why it shows that particular time. If you're not, it's okay. I'm not, no. Okay. I will go ahead and pass the witness. Afternoon, officer. Good afternoon. I'm Jason Sheffield. We haven't spoken yet about this case, have we? No, sir. Okay. Is it is it fair to say that you were there to lend a helping hand in whatever they wanted you to do? You had no specific role as yes. you arrived? Just to assist. And you met with Diego Perez, uh, who appeared to be eager to cooperate with you? Yes, sir. Um, the taking of his license, that's just something that you do to try to document who the relevant witnesses might be. It's just a little quicker than saying what's your name, what's your address, all sure. that. It's all in one spot. And it was your understanding that he had relevant information about what had been happening in the neighborhood. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Specifically, what had been happening in the neighborhood as it related to the particular incident that was unfolding in the street there at that yes. time. I interrupted you. Yes, you sir. spoke too no, soon. I'm just okay, agreeing yes. with you. Yes, sir. And so you, he went back to his home and he produced several videos for you on a thumb drive. Yeah, he came back with a thumb drive and I didn't review it. So Okay, so you're not aware of the contents. I'm, of no, sir, I'm not. But it's, to your understanding, it is whatever the history is that's been going on in the neighborhood that may be relevant. Yes, sir. Um, it's a pretty standard practice. Businesses, people that have cameras in their homes, hey, do you have any video footage? And they'll, you know, we just trust them that they're going to collect the footage that they have access to. And provide that to us and um, in this situation knowing that we were going to have investigators respond I had no reason to review it so I didn't review that particular footage Fair enough. thank you yes sir no questions no questions thank you and as I understand it you are uh, you are excused for the day but subject to recall Thank you. Thank you All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at a good stopping point for the day. So we're going to go ahead and break for the evening. I'd like uh, to have you ready to get started again at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning during the recess. Again, do not discuss, or excuse me, do not discuss this case amongst yourselves or with anybody else. Don't let anybody discuss this case around you or in your presence of hearing. Don't go looking for any information about the case. Whatever information may be out there, again, if you pick up the news, don't pick up the news, don't pick up news feeds, social media, whatever may be there. Uh, I'm just going to ask you to step away from all of that. And again, if anybody does approach you about the case, please notify the court and we'll go ahead and see whether we need to address that. So with those instructions and all of the other instructions I've given you to this point, we will see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Thank you for your service here in the Superior Court of Glenn County. Have a good evening.